How's it going everybody? Stellar here today. Uh, I just wanted to share with you guys real quick a feature that I am absolutely in love with with the new releases of Box Cutter and Hard Ops. Specifically Hard Ops today. Um, so if we go in here with our default cube, I'll go ahead and show you real quick. We'll just go ahead and select these faces here. I'm going to press Q and hold control when I do uh, when I click on curve slash extract right here. And it's just going to create a little kind of like a plane that's been extruded here so that's what that does is it basically just creates a little panel I'll go ahead and turn on my screencast keys here because I know somebody's probably gonna mention that I didn't have those on so now that we've got uh, this panel taken out what we can do is we can go into mesh tools and I'm just gonna press X and Z and that'll bring up our dice right here and I'll just scroll wheel it in just to give it some more um, geometry here I'm sorry I was lost for words there and then um, press uh, control tilde to bring this up real quick just to show you guys that I have my uh, apply crease and apply seam on because what I'm about to do um, is affected by uh, the sharps and everything so I went ahead and turned them all on because I didn't feel like finding out which exact one it is I was told it was just sharp, but I was having interesting results with that. So we're going to leave all of those on. We'll just go ahead and sharpen that so I put some hard edges there. And then next up, what we can do is press Q, go into Add Modifier, and then Cloth. And to make this easier, I'll go into my layout here. And we'll just press Spacebar or whatever the play button is uh, for you guys. So for me, it's Spacebar, or you can just press the little buttons down here. And it adds like a cloth simulation to your uh, geometry here. So that's always pretty neat. Um, went into edit mode by accident there. So I'll go ahead and press play again. And it kind of just gives you this um, little shape here and it's really neat to look at. Uh, it's, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff um, with this. And it's very, very neat. I've been obsessed with it uh, as of late just trying to have fun and figure some stuff out with it uh, can lead to some very interesting results so I definitely recommend as I tell everybody who asks me about uh, box cutter and hard ops I always tell them you know just give it a try and if you haven't always just get in there and have some fun with it uh, you know just start messing with features you've never messed with before um, just start playing with it and you might can have some pretty fun results so as you see right here I kind of uh, made like a little puffy cube almost but it's not entirely how I want it to be so what we'll do is I'll go ahead and sharpen that as well and then we'll go ahead and blow it out here so as you can see it kind of leaves like little seam lines and everything it's good for UV unwrapping as well. Um, this should just unwrap like a, a cube basically. So if we were to go in and apply both the cloth and the subdivision, you don't have to apply the subdivision, but you can if you want to. So if we go into our UV editing here, if I go into this cube and select everything, you'll see Blender um, already unwraps it for you, right? So it's nothing crazy, nothing hard to learn there. It's already unwrapped. Um, and the same goes for these as well, since we took the primitive from the cube and just added some more geometry to it. So basically what we did was subdivided it and uh, added a cloth sim to it. I know you can add cloth sims in Blender regularly, but it is always fun to be able to add stuff through hard ops because it takes 20 clicks down to 3 clicks and you know you can't really get can't really get angry at that. Um, you can also fine tune you know the uh, UV layout here but this works for general general purposes uh, so it's also pretty neat. So another cool feature uh, using this uh, little situation here with uh, hard ops is you can add some really nice paneling and everything to uh, like a spaceship or you know whatever it is you might be doing so I just added some loops in here or some some edges in here and then I'm just going to select every one of these we'll go ahead and press A and just mark all here 
And then what I'm going to do is just run in some, uh, just some loops in with the control R feature on the Y. And then what we can do now is that we'll go in to our mesh tools and just dice it along this Y here. So we'll just scroll wheel it up just to where it looks about right with what we had there. So we got a nice, decent quad set up. It's not perfect, you know, there's some some close uh, calls with each other here, but that's not a big deal. So what we can do is we can take this entire panel, we'll go to Add Modifier and then Cloth and press Space, and it blows this panel up for us. So what we can do is add a subdivision surface to it. You can even add a uh, second sub subdivision surface. And even with Shade Smooth not on, it kind of looks like a, like a rip stop or, you know, like a synthetic weird looking uh, fabric or whatever. But if we just shave smooth it, then it looks pretty good. Um, it all follows basically the lines that you set down as far as that goes. And then you can always uh, curve to form or you can even, um, we'll go ahead and apply the uh, cloth here if I can press the right button. You can even, uh, you know, array and do all your other normal stuff with uh, box cutter and hard ops with this because it's just a cloth sim and then once you apply the cloth sim it's it's just regular geometry as far as that goes and like I said before UV unwrapping is pretty smart um, especially you know if you're doing something complex like a backpack or a bag uh, I know a couple of people like the medical bag that I recently did um, basically I just set the seams where I wanted my seems to look if that makes any sense and uh, I unwrapped it it came out really nice straighten up the UVs a little bit and you can come out with some pretty neat results I really really enjoy using this feature so I'll go ahead and select everything and get rid of it and we'll go ahead and add in a cube here and I'll select all the faces in edit mode and then we'll go to face and we'll just poke the faces here next up we're just gonna mark everything Now I'm going to go into Mesh Tools, Dice, and we'll give it X and a Z so that way it's nice and dense and everything. So we got that all nice and set up there. So we have a really dense geometry for a cube here. So what we can do now, as you guessed it, we can go into Add Modifier, Cloth, I'll go back to the layout here. A, a neat feature with um, adding like the cloth uh, modifier is it resets your timeline every time, which is really nice because you know you'd be working with something and it's always annoying. Like you add a cloth modifier and just find up your mesh is like 40 units down or something floating in the abyss. So whenever you add the cloth modifier, and I'll go ahead and remove this uh, modifier here. And we'll move the timeline to, oh, let's say, something like 90, for example. And let's decide now, hey, I want to, to make this cloth. So we'll go ahead and do that. Cloth, and as you see, it reset the uh, timeline down here. If we go ahead and press play, might be a bit laggy. You know, the more geometry you give it, the, the more it's going to take to process the uh, simulation and everything, even with... A beefy computer um, like mine. Mine's not like the beefiest computer on the planet, but it's definitely not the slowest either. So I'm going to go ahead and shave smooth that and give it a subdivision surface of uh, one. And as you see, you get some very interesting results here. It almost looks like a quilted square pillow, if that makes any sense. So we can go ahead and apply the cloth and uh, we'll go ahead and apply the subdivision too. And if we look at the mesh, it's nice and, it's, well, it's just a nice mesh, really. And then you can use all these seam lines that we set up beforehand as your seam lines for your UVs, and it will come out looking pretty decent. Uh, I've done multiple tests before, and they have all come out really nice. So if we were to go into sculpting here, we can actually clean up some of the areas that might be pinching too much, uh, where you don't want it to pinch and overlap and everything you can just uh, clean up the mesh that way and I'm going to
turn off symmetry here because if you haven't realized by now, and this isn't really symmetrical. So, you know, you can just go in and refine some of the, the pinched up overlapping areas just to kind of make it look a little bit more visually pleasing. Um, also, when it comes to baking, it'll prevent burns and really bad artifacts as far as that goes. So, like, if you take this out to Substance Painter for whatever reason, um, like, say, you have a bigger project, <laughs> you don't want to have all this overlapping uh, geometry here because it'll just end up giving you issues. And you can always just go in with the smooth brush and just kind of clean up some of these seams here and look for areas like this where it's definitely overlapped. Go in just lightly. I have my strength set at, you know, 0.389 and that seems to get the trick done. You can go lower or higher, of course. It's all really up to you. And then, of course, since you have such a dense uh, geometry here, you can go in and even further refine it with the uh, cloth brush uh, if need be. So if you want to uh, do some fancy stuff with cloth you can always do that as well. I haven't really used the cloth brush too too much. Um, it's not really my thing. I'm not really a, a sculpting type person but it is nice being able to work on something so soft looking like this with the program called hard ops it's you know it's it contradicts it but it, it works so well and I I'm very much enjoying doing stuff like this so you get some pretty good results um, I highly recommend just you know jumping in giving it a try um, we'll do one more time off the top just so I can show you how I uh, can get those panels so let's say you know you have a piece of geometry like this right we can go in here, I can inset that face and just extrude that inwards. And then what I can do is I'll just hold control when I press curve extract. We'll go ahead and get rid of that so we can get a little bit of our performance back here. I'll select my piece here then I'll go down to dice and we can add in all of that. So now we have a nice good mesh We'll go to Add Modifiers, Cloth, and all you got to do is press Spacebar. Kind of wait for it to do its thing a little bit here. And what we can also do, we'll go into Orthographic View here, and we'll just try to move this outwards just ever so slightly because we do have some geometry issues. I accidentally um, screwed something up here it's my timeline here so we'll go ahead and go all the way back we'll press play and it doesn't work because I accidentally control Z until uh, I took my cloth modifier off so another neat feature is let's say you want there to be more pressure because you have higher geometry or whatever the case may be um, before you even press play you can always go back into your uh, physics for your object here and mess with it um, Sometimes you can increase the pressure. You can do anything you normally can in Blender with as far as the cloth goes, but it's nice that when with hard ops here, it's you press one key, hover your mouse over another menu, and click. And that's it. That's all you gotta do. Two 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 presses, that's all you gotta do. And you get a nice setup here, whereas instead you would have to go into the menus, add cloth, and adjust all your weights and stuff like that. So what we can do uh, here is I can also just set this as just a basic collision so that way the cloth here interacts with the cube here. Go ahead and inflate that, get it the way I like it. We'll shave and smooth that and just give it a level of uh, subdivision here. Yeah, that's just uh, one of the features that I wanted to show you guys. I'm a huge fan of it. I really, really like messing with uh, cloth simulation, especially with harder objects. Um, it's become a really fun thing, and you also get really good results with Substance Painter or uh, adding some, some normal maps and stuff to your geometry here. So, hope you guys enjoyed the little tip uh, here today. Um, Try to keep it nice and quick for you guys while also being really informative. If you enjoyed the video, definitely 
subscribe for future content like the video share it with your friends your grandma your mom whoever you feel like it um, if you have any comments questions concerns or emotional outbursts definitely leave that down there in the comment section as I do read and try to reply to most if not everybody who comments on the videos um, other than that I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and happy blending